From air and water pollution to climate change, there's no shortage of problems facing the environment. But future engineers are up to the challenge of solving them. More than 150 engineering students and faculty from universities nationwide met at the New Mexico Farm and Ranch Heritage Museum to test prototypes they designed and built to solve tasks. Tasks like using drones to measure the emission levels of industrial smokestacks or purifying drinking water with silver ions for astronauts. Vanessa Coria, a chemical engineering senior from the University of California, Riverside, is taking part in her third straight competition. Using solar energy, Coria and her team created a thermal drying closet to replace the household tumble dryer. The closet collects the sun's heat to dry clothes and can be automated with a microcontroller. Since the clothes hang to dry, Coria says there's zero waste from lint. As for emissions, we're drying, we're letting out air, and that's not a hazardous effect at all for, for the system. Um, another advantage is that we are reducing the cost of electricity and by reducing it we're helping those around us and the communities that can implement it um, and make it more sustainable for them because at the end we want to have a system that is sustainable and that can last longer. The design won Coria's team third place in their category. A handful of teams from New Mexico State University also competed. Civil engineering senior Fonzo Cini and team developed a special resin that removes phosphorus from runoff waste produced by animals raised in factory farms. We wanted to do this so we can actually help the environment, and but at the same time we also wanted a system that was cost effective by making the phosphorus into fertilizer. The thing is that we don't want to throw away phosphorus because it's also a very vital nutrient for growing plants. So if we can retrieve it, that'd be amazing. And with this process, we've been able to actually retrieve a bunch of phosphorus while at the same time removing it. Cine says it's also important to keep phosphorus out of local water sources like the Rio Grande because it can cause algae blooms that kill fish. Howard Wallace, a former Boeing Company employee, has been a judge for the competition since the early 2000s. He says he's impressed by how students are applying newer technologies like 3D printing and drones to address environmental issues. While the contest gives students hands-on career experience, Wallace says they must also learn how to communicate their designs to both judges and those with different educational backgrounds. How do you communicate to somebody that's not as well educated as you are in this particular field or that doesn't have the understanding too? And so it's interesting to see the growth and development and the, the, um, the differences between the teams in those areas. Obviously, uh, some are better prepared in that area than others. They're all, it's something they're all going to have to learn. And many of them are facing it right now and realizing that, that these are important elements for their careers. That's no easy feat, especially when it comes to topics like reverse osmosis, a process to purify drinking water. An NMSU team led by civil engineering senior Kim Featherlin aims to reduce the amount of chemicals needed to prevent calcium from building up on the membranes the water flows through. And it just won't allow the water to go through. So um, after a while, you have to change your membranes out. And it costs a lot of money to do that. And most uh, plants will be using um, anti-scalants to prevent that happening. And so there's a lot of chemicals being used. And we're trying to prevent that. Um, so we're going to use an electromagnetic device on our prototype. And we actually saw a almost a 20% more recovery rate just by using the EMF. Featherland says her team was inspired to improve the technique after learning news of a desalination plant proposed for Santa Teresa. We have a lot of brackish water underneath us. So we don't have a lot of fresh water. We need to come up with something in New Mexico um, to be able to desalinate this water and make it drinkable and maybe cheaper, maybe not use any chemicals or maybe use just a little bit of chemicals, but we're hoping to do it with the EMF, electrical magnetic field, instead of use of all these chemicals that are negative for the environment. Featherland's team won first place in their category, but win or lose, she says the fun she had with her teammates developing new ways to help the environment was a reward in itself. For KRWG Public Media, I'm Michael Hernandez.